One of the outstanding features of feminine interest in the world of horses is the Crabbit Arabian stud of Lady Wentworth. It is the continuation of ancestral racing studs extending over 300 years. As every thoroughbred breeder knows, the Arabian is the original fountainhead of all pure light horse bloods. Three centuries ago, the Arabian was the only fast horse in the world. Today, all our race horses trace their descent to these graceful aristocrats. With their fine carriage and springy action, they combine spirit and gentleness. With their sleek lines, they combine great weight carrying capacity and stamina. With all, they make grand steeds. Let's examine the grey horse on the left. He certainly has the first characteristics of an Arab, beauty, quality and style. Next, the small muzzle and large dilated nostrils that seem to indicate fire and spirit. But perhaps the most outstanding feature is the finely arched neck, an aristocrat amongst aristocrats. When you look at these pure-blooded creatures, it's not difficult to realize how their original association produced the thoroughbred stock which has made Britain the finest horse-breeding country in the world. As we have said, every thoroughbred racehorse today is, in varying degree, a descendant of Arabs. So it will be appropriate to call for a moment at the famous Newmarket racing stables of Mr. Jack Jarvis. Newmarket is known as the headquarters of the turf and it was largely through the patronage of King Charles three centuries ago that it achieved prominence. Early every morning the tracks to the heath are lined with thoroughbreds out for exercise. It's the time too for interested touts to rise early so they can watch the gallops and try to get the inside information so dear to tipster and backer alike. Whether they succeed is very doubtful for racing stables are sphinx-like in retaining their secrets. Apart from being one of the most successful trainers on the English turf, Mr. Jarvis, here he is, had the distinction of training last year's derby winner, Blue Peter. As soon as we have seen the horses back in their stables, we'll go over to Lord Rosebery's Mentmore stud, to which, owing to the war, Blue Peter has been retired. We have already mentioned how the original Arabs founded our thoroughbred stock. Perhaps the most famous of these was the Dali Arabian. The grand classic winner you're looking at now has in him over 40,000 repeat crosses of that wonderful Arab. All the best blood in the stud book, the thoroughbred register, has gone to the making of Blue Peter. When he moves, you can see the fine shoulders and great length of forearm, which have helped to give him his speed. If ever there was majesty in a horse, it is in Blue Peter. He had already won the derby when this film was taken, so we'll hark back to Epsom Downs on the day of the world's most famous horse race. Epsom is an open course, and except for the enclosures, is free, so it's difficult to check the numbers who throng the downs. From every corner of Britain, indeed the world, they come to see the thousand and one features that make up this meeting. It's everybody's meeting on this summer's day at Epsom when the cream of three-year-olds battle for the greatest honor flat racing has to offer. For over 150 years, such a parade has taken place. Not always such big fields or crowds, but intensely interesting. They're off. The 160th Derby has begun, for it was in 1779 that the 12th Earl of Derby originated this famous race. The sporting tradition of the house is well maintained by the present Earl. It is always considered anybody's race until Tattenham Corner. For it's here that fortune and jockeyship sought the possibles from the also-rans. Whilst the course is downhill to Tattenham Corner, there's a slight incline after rounding it and going up the straight. It's this that tests the stamina as well as the speed of a horse. 
and it takes a great horse to win. It was Blue Peter that time showing his great task by winning easily, and there was no prouder man that day than Lord Rosebury, his owner. Ascot is quite a contrast to the Epsom meeting. The crowds are there, but not the sideshows. It is Royal Ascot when society turns out in all its finery, when the fashionable world displays itself to thousands of folk who consider it an interesting prelude to the main business, racing. <laughs> Royal Ascot, when their majesties in a carriage drawn by the famous Windsor Greys drive in state down the course and pay their tribute to the sport of kings. Four days racing and not one race under a thousand guineas, the finest horses in the land competing for honours. It's racing at its best. Now we come to the greatest spectacle that the turf anywhere in the world can provide, the Grand National Steeplechase at Aintree near Liverpool. While you're watching the crowd, let me give you some interesting facts. The word steeplechase originated with the days when men used to match their hunters to ride across country. They usually chose a fixed point to, near a steeple to guide them on their way. It was grand sport, but spectators had little chance of seeing anything but a fraction of the race. So made-up courses where the circuit could be seen from enclosures came into existence. Just a hundred years ago, the Grand National was first run, and it was soon discovered that only horses possessing exceptional speed and stamina could stand up. And today, the 30 jumps over the four and a half mile course still attract only the very finest steeplechasers. And now we'll let the race tell its own story, that you may watch the splendid action of these thoroughbreds as they take jump after jump round the grueling course. and a half miles and 30 of the hardest jumps. Yet the winner, Workman, who is in front of you now, is running as though he had just started. A terrific performance. Most of the people cheering the winner are connected in some form or other with industry. They know machines, they live by machines. Yet the reason they are there, the reason why racing flourishes, is basically the British's love of horses. Thoroughbred or cart horse, admiration for a fine beast or deep attachment to a close friend, the affection is always there. From sleek speed to magnificent strength, the horse remains man's noblest friend. In the field, in traffic or in sport, his great heart beats in the service of man.